All right, welcome back. Um, just to recap, we uh, got the oil pan off, we got the pistons out, found out the failure, oil pump bolt, bolt broke off and smashed up against the number one piston, destroying it, and that's what killed this engine. Uh, the next part we're going to do here is we're going to actually remove this whole bed plate assembly, and that's what holds the crankshaft captive, so that would be the next part to take off. Um, so I already loosened up all these bolts, the big ones. They were too difficult for my little tiny impact gun to remove on their own, so I'm going to start buzzing them all out. As you can see, there are literally uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 bolts, 12 up there, probably another 12 down inside these channels down here, and then there's a couple here and there, so we're going to have to pull them all out to get this bed plate to come off. I don't know how well this is going to come off. It might come off pretty easy once the bolts are off, or it might there might be something else holding it on yet. So uh, we're going to get this off and see if we can get the crankshaft out. So I'm going to go ahead and buzz these out. And mind you, like I said, I loosened these up with a breaker bar first. So that's all the big ones. Now there's a couple E bolts that are up here. And when when you see that blue head, that means that they're aluminum, which BMW dictates as uh, being non-reusable, which is correct. So I'm gonna have to get my other socket. Yeah, if you're ever working on these engines, you see a blue-headed bolt like that. Never ever reuse them, ever. Or you'll have what happened to this engine, they'll probably break off. And then you're not gonna have a good time. So let's get these off. As you as you can see, they're aluminum. They're very light. So um, if you ever have to dig into an engine, um, the oil pan bolts are held on like this. Uh, the older style water pumps are held on by aluminum bolts. So if you if you see these, don't reuse them. Yeah, don't be dropping bolts inside your engine. We all know what happens. These I did not loosen up, and you can see they come up pretty easily. And this gun isn't all that powerful. So I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. And now there's a couple in here I'm going to get. There's a couple on the outside here. There's this. That's a smaller one. I'll get the other socket. I don't want to round it off. Uh-oh. That one doesn't want to come off very nice. Yeah, another thing to buy if you have a BMW or any amount of German cars is an e-torque set. They like to use those for whatever reason. And I'll get my smaller socket and get the other ones off. Looks like there's two right, right near each seal. each seal, one by the front, one by the rear. Well, two. All right, that's that's all the bolts I can physically see. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to pick these bolts out so they don't rattle around. I have big fingers too, so this is kind of difficult for me to reach in there and grab them. 
Let me get my, uh, let me get them all out. Now I'm going to grab my screwdriver quick and I'm going to use those to kind of flip them out. So just one moment. All of them. So, oh, no, there's one right here I missed. I gotta get that one yet. It's a bigger one. Alright, um, I imagine the easiest way to go about doing this is to flip the engine upside down. put together. It's just a matter of finding a spot. Maybe this will work. Well, this is going to be quite difficult to separate, I think. Because it's pretty... It seemed up pretty tight, and I imagine there's probably some kind of sealant in there. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab my bigger pry bar and see if I can't get that off. I'm going to put my pen in here. Keeps the table from spinning. It's a pain I've left to get in. So I've got to lock that table in. I'll get my crowbar. So there's a little ledge right here. Okay. It almost feels like something else is holding this together yet. Um, I don't see anything else though. I mean, at the very least, you think it would at least pop off. Is some kind of a, a sealant that's being used here to keep it in place. Imagine to keep it from leaking oil. Okay. Oh, I missed one. I'm down here. That would make things difficult. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, don't necessarily pry in things unless you know for sure you got all the bolts off, because that's how you break shit. Oh, let's see. So now the time the gear oil pump sprockets kind of bracket on there. Okay, so I imagine we're going to have to remove the cone. And that's not easy to get off. Um, I'm going to pause the video for a second. I'm going to get this off. It's a big bolt. It's in there with like 150 foot pounds, so it's not going to be easy to get off. So I'll crack that loose, and then when I get that done, I'll call you guys back. So, uh, my impact gun was unable to get this nut off. It's, they're on there really, really tight. So we're just gonna kind of try to work around it. I did, however, figure out in the front of this engine here, there are two holes for the timing chain guide rails in this bracket. And they're covered by these little plugs on the floor by my feet here. 
So I took those out. I didn't have a T or a E torque socket long enough to reach in there, but an eight millimeter six point did the job just fine. So you can see I'm turning it off right now. So we can get that bracket off, at least get it detached. And again, don't drop bolts in your engine. That's not good. So the uh, bracket's not really held on by anything now. It's just held on around that crankshaft, which I cannot get off because this nut's stuck. So, uh, I bet you I can look around that though. For now, anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this plate off. All right. So I'm not gonna tip this upside down too terribly much because there's a shitload of oil in it. I'm gonna put it over here. So here's the bed plate. This is where the uh, crankshaft sits on normally because the engine's upside down. You can see they use some kind of a sealant here. But uh, here are the main the main bearings. I'll take one of them out so you can see it. And again, they look uh, with some scoring there, but it's not terrible. You gotta remember how this engine was driven beforehand, so they're just kind of friction fit. So yeah, there's the main bed plate, solid aluminum. Fetch a pretty price at the scrapyard. Weighs about, I would imagine it weighs about 15 pounds. So we'll just set that in there and damage it. So here's the crankshaft. Um, so it's not really being held in by anything right now except for this shit, which I, I really can't get out because of this nut's stuck. Um, we're gonna try to lift it out though, see how far we get. Here's the rear main seal. As you get, this one was pretty loose, so this one's on the verge of failure. It just pops off. It won't come off though because my engine stand. But yeah, it just kind of slides on there. And here's the front main seal. And again, this one, this one's okay. And here's that cone thing I was talking about. This comes off. And that's why when you're doing, if you're doing any work with a harmonic balancer, never take this nut off, because it'll screw up your timing. So I'm, I'm gonna attempt to lift this out as a whole assembly, so we'll see how it goes. Um, the friction from the oil film is actually kind of impressive. It actually holds it pretty good. Oh, okay. Okay, so the timing chains are definitely causing a problem getting this out. Um, it's wrapped around the vacuum pump. If I could just get this stupid thing off, it'd make it so much easier. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this timing guide rail off. There's a little it's an actual regular Torx bit, which is what we haven't been dealing with lately. That long one will buzz that guide rail off and it should just fall out. There goes the whole timing chain assembly. So this is a timing chain assembly. So the crankshaft would be down here, and your two vanos can or your two camshafts, the vanos units would be up here. There's a hydraulic tensioner that puts pressure on this, which keeps your chains tight. And you can see inside here there is some wear, but again, 100,000 miles. These are all plastic. These would go for a long time yet, so these are fine. So that just kind of fell out. Here's your timing chain, and I bet you I can kind of work this around and get it off. I'm just gonna hang it back there for now. So, gotta get this, gotta get this thing off because that will, will enable me to slide this forward. I'm pretty sure, or I might have to take this vacuum pump off. So yeah, yeah. There's the belt tensioners in the way. So let's do that. We'll we'll come up to the front of the engine here. We'll take the belt tensioner off and pop that plastic cover off, which if you actually pressurize your engine doing that PCB valve test thing, those can actually pop off. So you gotta be careful. So they get the time belt tensioner off, there's a cap here, there's a Torx nut there. This is all pretty basic if you've done your own belts before. And of course it's not gonna come off. Um, 
get the big gun out. So we just loosen it. So that comes off of the hole. There's a time tire, yeah, not timing. Your serpentine belt tensioner. There, so now there's this plastic cover that uh, it's uh, covering the sprocket for that for your vacuum pump. Which here's your vacuum pump, and then the opposite side of this right here would be the high pressure fuel pump. So it all shares the same sprocket. So I imagine just it, these don't usually I've seen these pop out before, so they can't be any that tight. And I broke something. Timing chain rail. Okay, so I am going to get a little bit destructive. They don't like to be destructive, but when shit don't cooperate, that's what you got to do. Well, you don't care about it. Get my hammer, I'm going to try to pop this cover off. So once I get this cover off and get that sprocket gear off, and that'll give me more slack. There goes the cover. Ah! Oh, well, no, this bolt I dropped earlier. That's nothing. Ah, and here's the cover. And actually, I didn't even damage it. So this, you could reuse this. So there's the sprocket. So now you can kind of get a glimpse at the, uh, all the chain setups in here. So this longer one right here, this is your timing chain, wraps around this sprocket here, and then this secondary chain back here is for your oil pump, comes down, goes to your, your uh, uh, vacuum pump and high pressure fuel pump, and it goes back around to the crankshaft. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this sprocket off, and that should enable us to get this, because there's a couple bolts down here, there's a, we'll be able to pull the vacuum pump off. Get some slack and hopefully we can get this off because I can't get this nut off. It's too it's too tight. So we're gonna try to get that off. It looks like it needs a really big torx bit. Which lucky I have. And of course he won't come off. Never does. Well, I'm sure it would if I really reaped on it, but some of these parts are still usable. And actually, you can see it's actually turning the crankshaft a bit there. So I'm going to hold that. I'll push this up a little bit. Thing with Torx bits, you got to make sure you're square on them, otherwise they'll strip them. And that does sound lovely. We're gonna get the big gun on it. Might get kind of noisy. Well, I made quick work of that. So, always have a big gun. Bolt. So now if this came off, you should be able to slide this off. Kind of try to work the chain around it. Yeah, these things are in there really tight. Like it's a real tight fit for everything. So now, okay, here's the oil pump sprocket. Do I call everything from BMW says BMW on it? So now I got now that we got some slack, everything else should fall out to a degree. There's a bunch of like. I imagine in the event of an end, or a huge failure or to aid an assembly, there's a lot of little tabs that keep the gears in place. All right, so here's the, the vacuum pump one. And all these all these are made in Germany. Uh, JWIS. I'm not sure what company that may be, but... Eh. Well, nice metal, that's for sure. Put this bolt back in here so I don't lose it. Now that we got this all loose, oh, there goes a guide rail. 
Now we got this all loose. Now again, normally I would, you would take this cone off and then you could separate this and get this out of the way. But we're gonna lift it up as an assembly. So. Okay, so now this has some serious heft to it. I would imagine about 60 pounds. So. Here is the crankshaft. Like this is heavy. A good 60 pounds. Um, I'm gonna set this up in space. And here's the timing chain. Make a good bike chain. Here's the intermediate chain for your vacuum pump and oil pump. I mean, that's how tight everything is fit on here. Like, I cannot get this chain off. There's guardrails on here that keep everything in place. Like, even right here. So I imagine the event of a guide failure or something, it's to keep the shit from flying apart. So... There's really not a whole lot to see here. I will have to have somebody help me hold this and I'll have to put some heat on it to get this nut off. Or I'll just cut this off. Cause this, I wouldn't really use this. But yeah, here's the crankshaft. You can see all the journals. They look pretty nice yet. This is actually, I'm sure with a quick polish, this would be reusable. It's all heavy steel. So, pretty decent. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this by a little pump. I don't, want to, I don't want to damage that. That could be reused. So there's that. So here's the bare block. Now that you can kind of see inside here, if you look inside here, you can see some of the remains of the rings. I'm just knocking them all out. Here's another piece. And if you look inside number one here where the failure actually happened, um, you actually can see some metal right here. This is where the uh, impact happened, where the bolt got stuck up inside there. Turn this light on so it doesn't flicker like that. So, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see. The flashlight's PWM, so it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pulse a little bit. Yeah, right there, you can kind of see the notch. Right there, where it, it took the notch out, and then it just followed the bore. You can see down through the bore. How it just, uh... Yeah. So, yeah, that's what killed this engine. So, uh, a couple things I want to point out. Uh, these little tubes. Yeah, and this one's actually supposed... I don't know if it's supposed to be... Because the rest of these tubes are all straight. You know, kind of going at an angle inside the piston here. This one is bent to shit. You can see it's bent up flat against the block. Um, these are oil squirting tubes. So the uh, oil oil pumps and oil pressure. There's a there's a machine tube inside here, and these squirt oil up under uh, under underneath the pistons. Yeah, there's no way I can get. That's why you can't get the pistons out from the front. But yeah, they squirt oil up underneath the piston. And that lubricates the bores. It was a really, uh, it was kind of like a high-end feature in older cars, but it's become more commonplace in modern cars because of the higher tolerances, higher temperatures for fuel efficiency. So you'll see that in a lot of newer cars. But back in the day, it was like only high-performance turbocharged cars had them. And here's some more. Here's the crankshaft position sensor, and that's actually magnetic. So that's why a piece of the ring stuck on there. So that why that would explain why he was getting some. Uh, crankshaft position sensor codes because this would totally screw it up. So there's the, uh, this is just a bare block. I mean, this probably weighs, so I'm just kind of guessing, it probably weighs about as much as that crankshaft does. So, but yeah, there's really not a whole lot more to see now. Tore all the bits. Yeah, it's really easy to turn now. It's kind of lopsided. There's some more oil. 
And you can see the oil squirter tubes from up here. You can see number one is completely smushed up against the bore, but number two, three, and so on, they're all right in the middle. But yeah, you can see right here on the side of this piston right here, the bore right here, you can see the scoring. So that's what, that's what killed this engine. It, it's unfortunate because that's like probably a $2 bolt. $2 bolts what killed this engine. And uh, I don't have an explanation as to why it popped out. I mean, there's nothing fishy about the machining on the bed plate here or the oil pump bolted up to, which would be up in the front right here. I mean, all the threads look okay. And this oil pump would sit, would sit on there. There's a dowel pin for it, so it would sit on there just like that. So I don't, there's no iffy machining for the threads. I mean, I, I don't understand why that blew apart like that. So I guess it's just another weird way that these engines can fail. I've never seen it before or even heard of it. Here's the main bearing on the top, the top side of it, that is. And you can see there's little holes right here in the block. Right there, there's a little hole. And they, they coincide with the holes on these bearings. What that does is that's where oil gets in. Because these things don't technically ride on metal, they ride on a thin film of oil. And that's why lubrication is so important. Because as soon as you take that away, you're running on these bare pieces of metal and it does not take long to screw it up. So uh, that's the complete N54 engine teardown. If you guys have any questions or ideas on what I should do next, please message me or show me in the comments. And uh, yeah, please don't hesitate to ask any questions. So um, that's it for now. If you guys want any more close-ups of any of the parts I took off this engine, please message me. I'll gladly take pictures. Or if you just want one of these pieces, just let me know. I'll let them go for cheap. But I'm keeping this damaged piston. This one's mine. As a reminder. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.